Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbatihi ajma'in wa bishrahi sadri wa sirli amri wa ahlul uqratan min lisani yafqahu qawri We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family and his companions and those who follow them until the end of time uh, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I thought, alhamdulillah, what we would do uh, over the next two weeks is focus a little bit on Ramadan and take a break from uh, our regular reading because Ramadan, of course, is right on the corner. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, atakum Ramadan. Right? He said that the month of Ramadan has come. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said that every night in the month of Ramadan, one of the malaika says, Ya baghi al khayri aqbil. O you who are um, seeking good, accept this good, like continue, continue to do good. I'm going to move. I'm actually at a family event, and I think people in the kitchen are, they got it going on, you know what I mean? They're really full on party mode in that kitchen so let me step outside where i think it'll be a little quieter so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam he said ya baghi al khayri aqbil baghi is the person who is like seeking good right they want to find good wa ya baghi al sharri and o you or sharra o you who are seeking evil stop and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith related by Imam Muslim, the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam was ascending his mimbar, which came from Habasha. The idea of the mimbar came from Ethiopia. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ameen three times. And one of the things that he said Ameen about was someone who fails to be forgiven in the month of Ramadan. Why? Because some would, someone would have to be like deliberately not trying to be forgiven to be forgiven. Like in order not to find Maghfira in this blessed month, the opportunity of forgiveness is so much and so great that someone would literally have to like purposely not act on any khay. And that's further explained by the narration of Imam Ibn Majah from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam said that the obligatory acts are magnified infinitely in this, in this month of Ramadan. And then the volunteer acts are equal to a fard in their rewards with Allah. So SubhanAllah, like somebody would really have to be um, there should be determination, intentionality in not being forgiven. In order for someone to come through this month, subhanAllah, as and not achieve forgiveness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Wallahi lillahi itqanu min an-nar that every, inqadu min an-nar that every night in the month of Ramadan, there are a number of people who are saved from hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And he said, Man qama ramadan, man sama ramadan imana wa ahtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambi. Whoever fast this month of Ramadan with iman in Allah and hope in Allah, all of their sins will be forgiven. And the strong opinion, this includes the major, and the minor sins. That's the stronger opinion because that is the meaning of the text without interpretation. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam, he said, Man qama Ramadan imana wa ahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min thambi. Whoever stands and prays some of the nights in the month of Ramadan, all of his or her sins will be forgiven. So now we can see why the Prophet says, Ameen, right? Because just praying a little with sincerity and fasting with sincerity and hope will bring about forgiveness. And there are numerous texts like this. Whoever does such and such in the month of Ramadan will be forgiven. Whoever does such and such in the month of Ramadan 
will be forgiven. So this is why Sayyidina Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ameen. Ameen. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A person came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallallahu Alaihi he said, Ayyu A'malin Afdal, what is the best action? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alayka bi sawf innahu la adlala. He said, you should fast because it has no equivalent. So alhamdulillah, we are on a, a blessed alhamdulillah time where we're going into month of Sha'ban. We know worshiping on the 15th night of Sha'ban is encouraged according to the majority of Sunni madhabs, alhamdulillah. And then we are preparing now for the special month of Ramadan. And as I just mentioned in, in numerous religious texts, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, we can see that it's really an incredible time, subhanAllah, and a great opportunity to recharge ourselves and recenter ourselves. There are a number of benefits that we're going to talk about tonight for ourselves that come from the month. But before we do that, let's talk about the month itself. This is the ninth month in the lunar calendar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in the Quran when he says, After a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem, shahu ramadhan al-ladhi unzira fihi al-Qur'an huda lil-nas wa bayinatim min al-huda wal-furqan. At the month of Ramadan, Allahu Akbar is the month in which the Quran was sent. Ay anzarahu Allahu azza wa jal to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The word Ramadan is from the word Ramadan. Ramadha actually means something really hot. In ancient Arabic, when the surface of the earth would become hot, the Arabs would say, that when they would see the camels, you know, the baby camels who didn't have like strong hoofs, they would like lift their hooves off the ground because it was hot. They would say that the earth is marduma, a marduna, excuse me, or it's hot. Some ulama of, of history, they said that the month of Ramadan was given this name because when it was named as such, it was the summertime in the ancient, ancient, ancient Arab culture. And in Islam, we see here how Allah SWT has affirmed this name and kept this name because the month of Ramadan is a time to burn away our sins, subhanAllah, and to remove evil. The goal of this month, and this is where I see sometimes people making mistakes, is that they put their own goals before they mention the goal that Islam identifies should be the outcome of this month. So before my own... Uh, accomplishments before my own uh, hopes, I should put first and foremost what the Quran says the purpose of this month is for. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala ladina min qabalikum la'allakum tattaqun. That this month in the word kutib in usul fiqh is one of the words that means something is obligatory. If we wanted to literally translate it, it is prescribed that Allah has prescribed for you the month of Ramadan. It's a prescription, subhanAllah, from the knower of all things. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you will achieve a taqwa. So the goal of Ramadan is taqwa. That's the first thing that should be on our mind. That the first thing that we want to accomplish in this month, inshaAllah, is taqwa. And what is a taqwa? The word taqwa is from a word which means to protect or shield. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَوَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ And I hope you appreciate how I'm using the Quran to explain concepts. It's very important that we create enough Quranic literacy and literacy of prophetic traditions that when we talk about things, we are constantly trying to refer to revelation as much as possible and to the teachings of the Prophet. As we furnish the understanding of ideas in our minds, especially on issues like Ramadan, we should be consulting the Quran and the Sunnah of Sayyid Al-Aqwan, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is very important. 
So subhanAllah, the word Ramadan, uh, taqwa means to protect and to shield. That's why al-siyam, some people said al-wiqaya. The word wiqaya from the same word as taqwa. The word tuqiya, you know that sometimes Islamophobes, they say like, you know, Muslims are using tuqiya. Tuqiya means that I am allowed to say something. I'm allowed to lie to protect myself. It's found in the third chapter of the Quran. You can hear the word. It sounds like taqwa. So, uh, the person needs to protect themselves from others. This is called tuqiya. So the word taqwa is from the same word, which means to protect, a shield, a fortress. Maqwa is a fortress. Why? Because when I obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I submit myself in, to Allah, I am protecting myself from evil, right? We see that people who live evil lives, eventually it catches up with them. The evil catches up with them. Number two, I protect, so I protect myself from the results of irresponsibility and heathenry. Number two, I, res, I protect myself from the punishment, potential punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who very clearly says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot that Allah SWT is aware of our sins and aware of our evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yakhfa alayhi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama la ilaha illa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. Nothing is hidden from Allah. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Allah is witnessing everything we do. Wallahu ya'lam ma fi sudur. Allah knows what's in the hearts. So a taqwa is a way that I protect myself from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and the next. How do we achieve taqwa? And this is what I said earlier. When defining terms, it's very important that we go back to revelation. Because taqwa has a very, very simple definition. It is not complicated. It is not difficult, but mashallah, it carries with it a tremendous outcome. The word in, in, in religious nomenclature, which is synonymous for taqwa, is obedience of Allah. Allah SWT says, wa ala birri wa taqwa. That you must work together towards righteousness and ta'a. Obedience of Allah. Allah SWT says, In Allah yaj'al lakum furqana. In Allah, if you translate it as if you fear Allah, but actually it means if you are dutiful to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you if you exercise obedience to Allah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nasu abudu rabbakum waladhi khalaqakum waladhina khalaqakum. O oh, you who believe, O oh, humanity, worship your Lord who created you and those before you so you will achieve taqwa. So the word taqwa is synonymous with ibadah, worship and obedience to Allah, inward and outward. And that's why the Prophet said, Be dutiful to Allah wherever you are. So when I'm establishing the fara'id, the, obliga the obligations, and I'm avoiding the evil, this is taqwa. Now, taqwa has levels. The first is the taqwa of everybody who are Muslim, and that is those people who struggle and strive as best they can to observe the obligatory acts, mashallah. But the second is a higher level of taqwa, where somebody not only avoids those things which are clearly forbidden, and those things which are, and they are observing those things which are clearly obligatory, but they then increase in avoiding things that are permissible, fearing that they may fall into evil. And they increase the voluntary acts of good to amplify the beauty of Iman in their lives, to uh, increase the nur that they have in their lives, and to bring about a greater relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the second level of taqwa is not only avoiding the haram and observing of the obligatory things, 
but it's to avoid certain permissible things that may lead to the forbidden or are causing me to waste my time and to increase in secondary voluntary acts which are not fard but are going to nurun ala nur as the Quran says I'm going to increase my light فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ Whoever does an Adam's weight of good will see it. So now we can appreciate how the month of Ramadan is a month of training to take us from the obligatory components of taqwa to the higher level of taqwa. To take us from just obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by observing the obligatory actions and staying away from the forbidden for the next 29 or 30 days I'm going to avoid the permissible. I'm going to avoid eating and drinking from dawn to sunset, sexual relations with my spouse from dawn to sunset. So now I have moved. The month of Ramadan has taken me from the basic level of taqwa. It has now upgraded me. It has given me an upgrade. And that's why one of my teachers said, subhanAllah, that the sinners in the Muslim community become walis in the month of Ramadan and the walis, the friends of Allah in the month of Ramadan, they become like malay. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. There's an important lesson that we can take from that. And that is that oftentimes we are snarled, or snarled by our own insecurities. I'm not good enough. I'm not a righteous person. I'm not a person of taqwa. I'm not a religious person. I'm a bad person. I have these qualities. Exactly. It happens to everybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa man mir that nobody will uh, um, give up on the mercy of Allah except those who went astray. But sometimes our insecurities get us. So the month of Ramadan also comes as a, as a personal trainer and as a motivator to you to say, if you could do this, for a short period of time, why can't you do this for your entire life? SubhanAllah. If you could stay away from the forbidden and the permissible for this short period of time, then certainly you can stay away from the forbidden for your entire life. And that's why every day in the month of Ramadan is a reminder of our life cycle. After Fajr, we feel strong. By the time Dhuhr rolls around, we begin to feel some of the symptoms of weakness. That's like middle age. When Asa rolls in, this is what it feels like to be an elderly person. Not only do we gain empathy for the poor and underserved in the month of Ramadan and those who don't have food, but we should also gain empathy for our elder brothers and sisters because after Asr and right before Maghrib, we all feel physically the toll of fasting. So every single day is an uncompromising, unapologetic reminder of our mortality. Every single day of the month of Ramadan. And every single day, we were able to observe the khair and avoid even the permissible should motivate us to remember that outside of the month of Ramadan, it's going to be easy, alhamdulillah. It's like a boot camp, subhanallah. And every single day that we break our fast, we are reminded that if we fast from the evil of this dunya and we stay away from the forbidden things of this world, we will break our fast in Jannah. And we will break our fast from this dunya by drinking from the kawthar of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar, what a month, subhanAllah, what a month. There are a few things I want us to think about before I jump off, inshallah. Don't want to take too much of your time. This porch halaqa, we're on the porch today, mashallah, the porch halaqa. And that is, so you know, I'm certainly not in New York City if there's a porch. I may be in Long Island, but not New York City. And that is that shaitan before the month of Ramadan is working. He's working overtime. This is like his time to be a CPA if it was tax season. It's going crazy. Because he knows there's so much opportunity in front of you. There is so much 
opportunity that is in front of you, that he's going to work hard to do things to cause you to lose the maximum benefit of the month. So there are four things you want to be aware of. The first are three entry points of shaitan that he will use to try to outsource the evil while he's gone in the month of Ramadan. Although there's one shaitan that doesn't leave you. We'll talk about that at the end in the month of Ramadan. The first is anger. So be very careful as you get close to the month of Ramadan that you don't get into fights with your spouse, fights with your parents, fights with your siblings, fights with people that are close to you. Because shaitan will use those fights when he's gone. They'll carry over throughout the month and they'll take away from the potential benefit that you would achieve from the month. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in that, that indeed anger is from shaitan. So be very, very careful that you're not triggered before the month. Online arguments, all of this kind of unnecessary nonsense that people are arguing and fighting over, you know, as though, you know, Muslims are fighting over Ukraine, as though, as though we have the budget to be fighting over other people's problems. Like, really? We, we haven't even built power for ourselves. We can't even defend Linda Sarsour in New York City from attacks. And we are somehow having enough bandwidth to begin now arguing and fighting Muslims over Ukraine. Like, wow, well, that's, that has nothing to do with you. You can have an opinion, you don't have to fight about it. The second thing is shaitan will come to you with negligence. Start preparing for Ramadan now. Don't wait until the month starts to try to get into the zone. You want to start taking some, some, some free shots now. You want to start stretching and getting in the zone. So begin to prepare now for the month of Ramadan. By making toba, by increase, increasing your good. Start worshiping now like it's the last 10 nights and watch how different the month is for you. Start now with that passion that you have towards the end of Ramadan every year. That should be what you find the next year if the Ramadan was legit. So you want to go in Ramadan. Usually people go in hungry for food and leave hungry for Allah. You want to go into this Ramadan hungry for Allah and leave hungry for Jannah. The third thing are desires, shahawat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about shaitan, Zuyina lahum su'u a'marihim. Shaitan makes evil look good to people. So he's going to really amplify it now. So people are like, yo, I got to get all my sinning done before Ramadan starts. How do you know you'll live to see Ramadan? You might die in that sin. A'udhu billah. And the Prophet said, we will be resurrected how we died. But as though someone has that kind of control, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa mudabbiru kulli shay. Allah is the one that controls all things. So even the fact like, yo, let me get all the evil out of the way now before the month starts is a problem with qada and qadr, is a problem with iman and tawheed. How do you know you're going to live that long? Imam al-Hassan al al-Basri, you know, he was invited to someone's home and subhanAllah, when he, he went over there, they were storing food. And he said, why are you storing food? They said, for tomorrow. He said, subhanAllah, the believer doesn't believe in tomorrow. It means, doesn't mean don't be strategic, but the way they were saying it was like very negligent, subhanAllah. Oh, comes my daughter. So, subhanAllah, you know, as a father, when you hear your children's voices, you boom, suddenly get, your attention gets, gets uh, taken away. So, we should be ready now we shouldn't wait and neglect oh yeah inshallah when ramadan starts I'm, imagine if we repent now and our repentance is accepted and then we we go into ramadan in that way like subhanallah man like it's going to be incredible and the last thing that i want us to think about as we go into the month of ramadan is to see ramadan as a process and not an event right Ramadan as a process, not an event. Because 
If we look at Ramadan's event, Ayla, sorry, come here. My daughter's like running in the woods. Not, we're not used to having woods in New York City, so she's going crazy. But when you see Ramadan as a process, instead of an event, then if we aren't able to keep up our goals that we set forth, are you okay? You want to say hi to everybody? Come say hello. You're running in the woods, man. Say, hey, look, 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 look there. We can build a tent. You want to build a tent? Turn around, turn around, turn around. Look at the camera. Hmm. Say, salam. So. Oh, I got the wrong kid. Sorry. That's all good, bro. So, so we, when we look at it as a process instead of an event, if we begin to fall short of some of the goals that we set for ourselves, in the beginning, we won't give up. And a lot of people do this. They think like first three days, they go hard. First three days, first four days, they go just full on, full blast. And they're not able to sustain it. And they're not able to keep the meaning of it. So they fault themselves. And what do they do? They give up. What you want to think about and what I want to think about is the process of Ramadan should be two things. It should be meaningful, meaning it's, you, you have that passion, but it should be sustainable. It should be something that I can realistically do throughout the month with work, with family, with like now I'm giving, trying to give a halakha to my daughters, you know, running in the woods, right? I got to do what I got to do. You got to do what you got to do. We should all understand that. That's life. That's how life is. So these are some thoughts for this portion of the month of Ram Ramadan next Monday or Tuesday. We'll go through the fiqh, some of the fiqh issues related to the month of Ramadan, inshallah. But these issues I hope that I share with you are somewhat helpful how the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa is so intense in this month. It's like incredible. Someone has to deliberately be trying not to be forgiven. You know what I mean? Like subhanAllah. And then the goal is taqwa. And what is taqwa? Is obedience. So we want to work on our fard, establishing fajr, establishing maghrib, isha, those prayers in our life, being consistent in worship, staying away from evil. And then the third thing we talked about, shaitan, how shaitan is going to come at you with three entry points in me, anger, desires and negligence and the fourth i added is shaitan will try to get us to do event-based religion instead of process process-based religion a process here means a process here means sustainable meaningful sustaining sustainable meaningful and the final the final thing that i'll share with you is that many people wonder like in in ramadan like why do they continue to be evil because you evil <laughs> you know what i mean like let's not let's not assume that we don't have evil inclinations in our heart. And let's not use fitra or fi ahsani taqweem as an alibi for ourselves not to focus on ourselves. One of the goals of Ramadan is self-interrogation. That's one of its goals. So people wonder like, well, the shaitan are locked up. Like what do I want to still do bad? Because I like bad, you like bad. We need to deal with it. Second thing is that there is one shaitan who will never leaves you. And that is the shaitan called Qareen. And we talked about this in the spooky session around six months ago. And this is the shaitan that is born with us at our birth and will die when we die and will be there in the hereafter to try to give us problems. So we'll stop here. If there's any questions, inshallah, super happy to take them now. I hope everyone is doing awesome and amazing. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the chat is so quiet. Um, but if there's any questions or comments, super happy out here in the woods to uh, to be at your service, inshallah. And me, thank you, Kareem. بارك الله فيكم وجزاكم الله خيرا وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد please keep us in your du'a this could be such an amazing month man let's all stay positive don't worry about the bad you did you know what I mean the bad I did there is so much forgiveness in front of you and as I said shaitan is going to try to plant things to try to stop you from really becoming and achieving achieving what you can be 
you know, and that's really how you want to look at this insecurities and, and that feeling down. Although, of course, that's Alina, I've been looking for you. Email me. And that and that looking down on ourselves and losing our drive once we once we once we surrender our utility to shaitan or once we surrender our utility to the fear of our own evil we're out this is it's a wrap so we want to surrender that utility to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's bringing us into this incredible month man I ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase you in khair Barakallahu feekum, jazakum allahu khairan, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, next week we're going to talk about Ramadan objectives, like what is it that we want to accomplish, inshallah. And remember, for those of you who may be unable to fast, just make the intention, man, you cash it in just with your intention. Just don't like, feel, oh, I'm not part of it. And we have to make sure that deliberately and within communities, we make people who feel like they're not worthy because they can't fast for a legitimate reason. They are a team Ramadan. You know what I'm saying? They are a TR for life. And their intention is going to bring them so much khair. That's why some ulama said, when Allah loves you, he allows you to be inflicted with a sickness that keeps you from doing the act. Pay attention. Because if you did the act, there would be shortcomings in it. Like when I physically try to perform something, there'll always be some Undoubtedly, there's going to be shortcomings that are rooted in my inability to be perfect. But if I'm sick, may Allah protect us, and I make intention, then the intention for me is perfection. So imagine my intention for perfection is rewarded more than my acts that have imperfection. So when Allah loves someone, sometimes he allows them to be influenced or hit with illness because he wants them to get the rewards of their perfect intention instead of their acts that have shortcomings. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And that's what we should be saying to people who are unable to fast. Make the perfect intention. So that your intention, niyyatul mu'min khayru min amali. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So may Allah SWT bless you and bless all of us. Alhamdulillah, much love to you, inshallah, and keeping you on khair in this amazing, amazing time. Next week, we're going to go through the easy fiqh of Ramadan. We'll touch on complex issues, but explain them in an easy way. And inshallah, take your questions and more. May Allah SWT increase all of you. Really appreciate you being patient with me on the porch, watching my child terrorize squirrels you know <laughs> she never sees stuff like this before so she's like super excited but keep us in your prayers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah